Welcome back everyone. Royce and I are out in the woods on a hike today and we've been asked to review a GPS tracker uh, that works on radio frequency by PetGent and it's a Canadian uh, invention. It was designed here in Canada so I wanted to feature it on the channel. So as you know we've used a few different kinds of trackers. Uh, we've used the Tractive which is for on-grid um, you know cell signals required for that one and we've used the Finster which is for off-grid uses radio frequency and your Bluetooth on your phone. Um, but we lost that one. So I've been long looking for that, uh, the one in the market that kind of goes between these big hunting collars uh, with radio uh, frequency and uh, the Tractive. So here it is, the Pet Gent. Uh, so let's take a look inside the box. It's been raining like crazy here. So uh, lots of mushrooms are going to be out here. Um, and Royce is just piddling around. So this is kind of an area where um, cell signal isn't great, so I'm excited to uh, unbox this and see what's going on and use it. All right, so here we are in the box. We've got two devices, two silicone cases, which are their waterproof cases basically, uh, charging cables and the quick start guide. So as you can see here, uh, what's cool about this is that there is no subscription fee required or additional costs, and it gives you real-time uh, data to find your pet off the grid. And you can see that built-in GPS GLONASS and the six axis gyro accelerometer. So uh, it's going to give us actually some activity data uh, and just sort of tell us what's been going on. So, uh, oh yeah, look at that. It's got custom geofencing. Very cool. Right. So here are the two units here. One is a receiver and one goes on the dog. You can see in my hand there, it's a decent size. Maybe not for a cat, but for dog, it's okay. Uh, they also say you can use this um, to track devices like, you know, bicycles or dog kennels and stuff like that. Um, so, uh, yeah, here we go. Uh, and in here, of course, is, uh, your manual and a couple of cables. Uh, these are the cases that it comes with. Let me just show you here. So here's one. It's a silicone case because, uh, the product itself is sort of a splash proof. Um, so it's good to kind of protect it from water and it just kind of fits in like so in here. And of course, what you want to do is you want to, you know, turn these on, uh, and you're going to register for the PetGent app that you need to run these. And each comes with its own little cable like so. Uh, it's sort of a custom cable to charge it in a USB port. <laughs> I had to get moving again. The bugs are ridiculous in here. So here's uh, what they look like. This is a little case, so it's splash proof. Um, you know, it seals pretty well, so it probably has some, um, some you know, protection from the water. I think I'd be pretty careful about uh, letting Royce go in a lake with it and go diving or something like that, which he doesn't do anyway. Um, but uh, yeah, so the only thing... I noticed about this case is sort of a thin little strap here like this goes around the collar uh, like so and it sticks on um, but I do worry about how thin that little strap is there um, for an active dog with horsing around and playing in the woods it's a possibility it could get knocked off so just be aware that uh, you may want to use a zip tie uh, to secure it to the collar or something like that uh, just to be on the safe side I mean live and learn I did the, the I had the finester for a while going well and then he was playing and he knocked it off um, so with any of these trackers there's a possibility to lose them uh, you know just with their being active so keep that in mind with this one so let's put on his collar all right so there it is on the collar uh, looks pretty slick pretty good for a, a dog like him nice size and then uh, here's the other one so this has to stay with your person because this communicates with the phone um, and then these two communicate together through radio frequency so they say the range, uh, you know, in really dense, complex environments is like 0.8 of a mile. Um, and then, you know, as you um, like downtown stuff like that, really dense bush. Uh, if you're in open areas, um, you know, we're probably looking at anywhere between uh, four to six miles. So that's uh, that's all right. Um, sort of kind of like the Feinster as well. And again, just remember, it's sort of like walkie talkies. It's all about line of sight and, uh, you know, what the units can kind of see sort of thing. So. Um, yeah, so let's just take a look at the app itself. There you go. So on my phone here, you can see um, the PetGent app. And so you open that up, and you can see here I am. So I've set this up already. You can just get it off of the, uh, you know, anywhere you buy your apps. Um, so I've got it all set up here to have my indicators on. And you can see here are the two different devices, so me and Royce. And you can see how they're charged. Uh, it says that they, uh, you know, in power saving mode uh, can last for quite some time. Um, usually about 10 hours during the day, uh, sometimes up to 24. Um, but you definitely want to kind of keep a charger with you at all times because even just with us doing minimal stuff, um, you know, I charged it a couple hours ago, uh, it's already down a bit, so keep that in mind. Um, so just take a look here, you can see there's me, the devices we have, so that's how I get back to sort of see, oops. 
So here we are, you can click on devices to see us again, that's how we saw that. Um, general, which has information about how you want to set this up, to put sound on, vibrate, map style that you want, region, your phone permissions obviously. And then this is a cool feature, geofence. So you can set up a fence uh, to alert you where if the dog leaves a certain fence. So right now we're on this little trail here and uh, you can see the bush all around us. And so what I want to do, you know, I can sort of set a little, if I don't want him to go over this part of the trail, then I can set that up and save it. And it'll save to the map. You can name it, I don't know, fence one, let's say. So save that. So there you go. So if he goes back over this way, uh, so you can't see it if you click it. You just gotta go back to your map. So let's go back to the geofence map. Oop, not that one. We need to go back here to the map. So if we go back to our little map here, you can see there he is. And there's our little fence over there. So uh, he's not gonna uh, cross that, okay? Um, and so it has all our, it has our history here too, which is cool. That's sort of like the Finster too. You can kind of go in there. So if you tap into that history button there, uh, you can see where he's been and you can kind of scrub back over time, but you can see it has a heat map too, which is neat. Tractive has that where you can kind of see how long they spent times. We were there for a little bit chatting with you guys, ran into a biker, chatted with them for a sec. So that's really neat. So in addition to geofences, you can share your location, um, either myself or Royce's location with someone else by email or accept other offers to monitor. And there's their website and their feedback. So there you go. And if we look here, we can see that there's his activity. So he's done 560 paws and he's gone 1,200 feet since we've been uh, having his little tracker on there. So one thing I should say about the geofencing feature, it's really cool and I loved it with Feinster. If Royce left a certain part of the property, I uh, had marked off a fence, uh, it would buzz my phone right away that he had left a uh, safe zone. So uh, that was really, really important to me. Now with this uh, tracker, it does appear that uh, works. That feature works well with Apple phones uh, for sure. Uh, it does not, there's no guarantees if you have uh, an Android phone. So uh, some Android phones work and some don't. Um, my understanding it's something to do with the background permissions. If it runs in the background, it may be difficult for it to, uh, you know, be on all the time and remind you that, oh, they're getting close to the border of a fence line. So um, I have an Android phone, uh, so we'll see how that works out. Uh, over time. Um, if you have it running in the foreground, my understanding is with some Android phones, it does work. So that's something you're going to have to figure out or contact the company to see if your phone uh, would work with this product. Of course, the attractive thing about these kinds of GPS trackers is they're sort of a mid-range cost. This, uh, you know, goes for about 220 Canadian plus tax, kind of like the Feinster. Uh, if you're looking at some of the bigger, you know, like Garmin uh, GPS trackers, you're looking at like $1,000, 800 bucks for some of the lower end models. Um, you know, so it is attractive, you know, for an off-grid model. Um, you do have to have your cell phone, obviously, so you do have to have that with this product, like the Feinster. But it can be used globally, which is great, and there's no fees. You just buy the product, that's it, that's all. So that's super attractive. And I like that you can use it for something other than, you know, dogs as well. Like if you're, you know, going on a bicycling tour somewhere and you park your bike, you know, whatever, you can put the tracker on that as well. And uh, it has uh, a motion detector so that if, um, you know, your bike starts moving suddenly and you're not the one moving it, uh, basically you will get an alert to your phone uh, that that has happened. So that's great. And uh, also um, one of these devices, you, know, you can hook up like 30 uh, units to one sort of uh, device and you can relay them. So you can, to extend your range, if you have someone else that's with you, another part of, you know, hiking trail or something, um, you want to sort of set it up somewhere in between so that uh, you extend your range um, so you can track your dog a little bit better. So, you know, you can kind of uh, use that feature to your maximum advantage. Now, they do sell them as pairs, so you have to get one device for the person and one for the dog. So you can't just get them individually. So, um, you know, it is a little bit difficult, I guess, if you want to get more, you have to buy the whole, you know, the whole setup. Um, and also, you should know that um, one of the uh, trackers, like the devices, uh, just it, there's one account that can pair uh, to these devices. So you can't set this up on multiple, um, multiple phones. And right now, as we walk along, it is tracking uh, Royce's uh, activity. So the number of paws walked, uh, things like that. So if you're interested in that for, you know, their fitness, kind of a little doggy Fitbit, uh, this unit does that as well. And I found that really helpful. As you know, I found that really helpful with Attractive because I could tell, you know, his time sleeping and, and stuff like that and how much he was moving. Uh, this device, uh, the app doesn't go into that kind of detail, um, but uh, it certainly does tell them how active they've been and how many, like, how many hours they've been kind of moving around. 
and you can set a goal for that. Well, we are certainly giving it a good trial here with the water. That's mostly what he does is splash around in the water. So uh, we'll take a look at it at the end of this little chat here and see how it's looking. So he's just about to enter a geofence that I've made up on the trail here. So let's see what happens, see if my phone alerts me. Now I have it setting up to update me every minute. Uh, of course to save, um, I'll show you, you can set this to like five or 10 minute updates so you can save your battery. So I can see where that could be a problem. Like sometimes minutes count uh, when dogs bolt for roads and stuff like that. So, um, you know, you may not be able to get them in time uh, with that kind of a refresh rate, but it's kind of typical for a lot of these trackers. Yeah, so right now I have them in power saving mode at one minute tracking intervals. Uh, let's adjust that. So here's where you put it. Uh, if you click on power saving mode, you can kind of go down here to live tracking, power saving or motion detection. So let's put them in live tracking. This is actually, this is good. So this is what I was talking about earlier. A lot of the trackers, you know, they don't refresh as fast. Now look at, we can track them at 10 seconds and 30 seconds. So this is really helpful. So, uh, you know, if he bolts, um, we can get alerts right away. Now it will chew up your battery. Keep that in mind. I also want to show you, I also want to show you guys as well. It does track me at the same time. Uh, so there I am. I wish, I don't know, I can't see both of us at the same time on the screen, which I'd, I'd like to see where he is in relation to me. So I don't know if I'm not doing this properly, but uh, I can't see him and I at the same time. Okay, so we're going to come up to another little fence I've made uh, just up ahead here. So let's see if it dings me. And that would be a nope. So I've got the app running right in the foreground here. Uh, he's in the geofence area. As you can see, no notifications. So uh, don't rely on the geofencing if you have an Android phone. For just a second, I've kind of put on a different kind of map style. It's just a regular map style, which will work if you're in the city. You can see the streets and the houses, but definitely doesn't work uh, for, like for any tracker in the countryside because it just looks like a trail with lots of green. Now, word to the wise, um, if you are going to be in an area where there really is no cell signal and you want that, uh, that really crystal clear map of the forest and stuff like that around you, that bird's eye view as they call it, make sure to download a section of your map to your phone. Um, because otherwise you're just going to get a blurry green blob. You're not going to be able to know the features or things like that. So you're going to want to, you know, go on your map program and download that map. Um, otherwise you're not going to be happy, um, you know, when you're, you know, hiking around anyways, because you won't be able to see the detail, and especially when you're using these kinds of trackers. One thing I miss about this app uh, is the radar mode. So, um, you know, you can detect the dog within you know, the Bluetooth range of the phone for the pinpoint accuracy. Uh, I can tell you how many meters away they are, etc. So maybe that's coming in a future uh, future app update. I don't know. But Tractive has something similar as well as the Finster had that. So the price point seems pretty good. It seems like a pretty, pretty solid piece of hardware. I do worry a little bit about um, how waterproof it is for dogs that are really into the water. Like Bryce is not so much, but um, for dogs that are really in swimming and deep water and stuff, um, you know, it may, you may want to be really careful with that. Um, the silicone case looks good. Um, the strapping a little bit, a uh, mm, little bit thin. I worry, uh, use a, um, you know, some kind of another strap or something like that. Um, zip tie, whatever, to kind of secure it to the collar just as backup. Um, we'll see what the battery life is like. Um, it certainly charges very quickly. Um, when I was charging it up for this video, it didn't take me very long, like an hour, or something like that. I wasn't keeping too much track of time, but it was really fast. I remember looking and oh, that's cool. Um, and of course, now we're in live tracking mode. The battery's starting to go down just a little bit. Uh, so something to be aware of. If you're not using live tracking, uh, definitely put it in power saving mode and, uh, you know, uh, conserve that battery as much as you can. And bring a battery bank if you're out camping. Because certainly, um, you know, when you're out all day and you're tracking them, uh, like with any collar, um, it will uh, it need a charge up here and there. So battery banks are awesome. All right, let's go check in on Royce now and check out the... Uh, the GPS on the collar, just make sure it's still looking okay. Well, it's looking good. Still on there pretty decently. Excellent. You can feel it's a bit damp from his playtime, but it's uh, holding up. This is good. Off you go. <laughs> you know, we do so much off leash work, uh, off grid. Uh, it's definitely a, a useful product. So I'll get back to you guys on how things are going with it. We're just in our first few little trials of it want to check it out give it a fair assessment so uh stay tuned uh, i'll definitely give you guys an update after i've been using it for a little bit so far it's an interesting product it's sort of filling the gap in the market because finester is now gone um and you can only get kind of like tractive or some of those other ones like that for on-grid use cell network uh, monthly subscription style or those big hunting collars so i think this is a good little start in this edge of the market so we'll see how it holds up well, thanks so much for tuning in today, guys, to learn about this tracker. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave them down below in the comments, and I'll try to answer them for you. All right, take care. Bye for now.